Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. Bill Puckett with my buddies. Drew Spence, how you doing, man? Never a dull moment in sports, right? They really aren't. They really aren't. Pat Duffy, I, I think, right? A Fitzy? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, his career could be over. He's my hero. of all. When I grew up, I want to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. I was so looking forward to seeing him with Washington come to Orchard Park in two weeks. Because it would have been back-to-back -back yeah. former Bills quarterbacks, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tyrod Taylor with Houston. Now i got to watch Taylor Heineke. I can Tyler. assume that you're going to be leading the charge to the Hall of Fame for number four. Time. I made the legitimate argument on this show before, yeah. and the numbers back it up. So, yes. Yes, I am. You can make that claim. Uh... Well, geez, for a change, why don't we talk a little COVID? A little tired of this, but at the same time, uh, the Buffalo Bills came out this week with an edict laying out new ground rules for attending football games. It'll be effective next week when the, the Washington football team comes in. This is essentially as restrictive, Tariq, as any I've seen anywhere. Well, this, this is what I feel bad about it. Whether you're vaccinated or not, either way, I hope they know a percentage of different people that are vaccinated will be at the stadium. I still think people who are vaccinated and never been to the stadium will go to the stadium because now there's availability to do so. What makes this sort of feel, I feel terrible about is how many years, 20 plus years, fans have been waiting for a team they can root for that could win every single week, just about every single game, in it every single time, and now are put in a position of whether or not they're vaccinated or not, whether they can be in the building. I don't think they'll stop supporting the team. I know a lot of people will say that. I think they will just be upset about this. Six months from now, we'll be in a totally different spot. Maybe a year from now, we'll be in a totally different spot where COVID isn't an issue because we're all tired of it. But I just feel bad for the fans that are not vaccinated, their belief, what they want to do, and they cannot go to this stadium unless Unless they get vaccinated. So as a, a matter of review, there was a mask mandate for the first week and yeah. it was largely ignored. <laughs> and for the second now, you, you need to show proof of vaccination, at least one shot until the end of October and they'll require both to even get into the game. I find the whole thing, the way this played out interesting though, because to your point, I was at the game on Sunday, uh, last Sunday against uh, the Steelers. Yeah, man, that mandate was non-existent, right? They wanted you to wear it in the concourse inside. I didn't see anybody wearing a mask and there was no way they were to enforce it. And here's where I think went wrong because Erie County wanted the vaccine mandate from the beginning. And they're calling the shots. Yes, so they own the stadium. The Bills lease the stadium. Like, you know, Pagoulas don't want to build a stadium. I, now, I don't know where the Pagoulas stand on this whole thing. It feels to me like Erie County is the one that pushed this forward after the videos and photos came out of no one wearing masks, going to the Pagoulas saying, if you can't enforce the safety rules that you've put in here, well, what chance do we have? If you want to be able to make your own rules, pay the money and build the stadium. Look, they're looking for state money for a new stadium, the Pagoulas are, right? And there are people that are draw drawing a line in the sand when it comes to what this means and how people feel. Look, there are shades of gray to every story. The cynic in me, and I know nothing past this, is the Pagoulas are doing this because they know it's for good for negotiation when it comes to money for their new stadium. And they don't want to anger Erie County. They don't want to anger the state of New York. By the way, the governor, as of now, a woman from Buffalo. And... If you agreed to the mandates with the masks that were set by the county, well, how can you say you're going to enforce it when you didn't even have enough people working to have the gates going? It took us 45 minutes to get into the game. It's normally a 10, 15 minute thing. Wow, that is a that's a tough line to draw. And it's also, you know, it's like because my first reaction is, is a little bit of altruism here that this is the right thing to do. Period. I think it is the right thing to do, but I do understand where the fans are coming from, where they're upset, where it's surprise on them. If it has been done maybe earlier on in the season, perhaps. But this is a negotiation thing. I, th I think I'll go off of what Duffy said before. This is a long-term negotiation. So now we have to sort of play nice. We have to do a couple of different things that maybe the fans don't want, maybe maybe disliked about. But there was this alternative where the team would leave, where you would not get this team, and that is a possibility. So I guess that you're going to have to play this out all the way through, let the negotiations go through to the point of the governor who's in favor of it, the commissioner who's in favor of it. Everybody wants this new stadium. The Bills deserve it now that they're playing extremely well. I just find this very just tough to deal with for just this season. Give it six months. I guarantee you'll be in a better spot. To your point about, you know, altruism and things like that. And we said it on the air in the break room this week. If you're upset with the Bagulas for what happened here, they don't deserve the blame. If you're, ups if you're applauding the Pagulas for what they've done, they don't deserve the applause. I know nothing. It's a cynical view, but I think this is all negotiation moving forward. And I mean, look, they also said in the press conference moving forward, it's the Sabres. Games are going to be this way as well. And it looks like that the Amherst and the Nighthawks games, both Pagula properties here in Rochester, are going to have the same thing. Something to think about. Well, we're going to talk football with the Buffalo Bills next.
Original Bay Goodman Pizza, located on the corner of North Winton at Browncroft. There are three ways to get the original Bay and Goodman delivery. Go to baygoodman.com. Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. Time to talk Buffalo Bills. This Buffalo Bills segment is brought to you by Ralph Honda. For three generations and celebrating 50 years as New York's first and oldest Honda dealer, visit Ralph Honda today. Find out how we do Honda right. RalphHonda.com. All right, let's talk the Bills. That one blindsided me. Did it? Because I remember a really smart bearded man last week describing exactly... Oh, it was all fear. I, was, it, was it fear? Was it justified fear? Was it not? What did I say? I said my irrational fear on this show is that the crowd would show up, Josh Allen would be jumping, and he was going to air, airmail balls. He airmailed two guaranteed touchdown passes, one to Emmanuel Sanders and one to Stephon Diggs. And don't get me wrong, man. I'm not jumping on this. The season is over thing. In fact, mm -hmm. if you look at the numbers between the game that the Bills won against the Pittsburgh Steelers last season in primetime and the game that the Bills lost opening day, it is eerie how similar the numbers are for Josh Allen passing, for Ben Roethlisberger passing, the way the defense is played. The only difference between those two games is the big play potential. Teron Johnson, pick six, return, helps the Bills win the game. That block punt, how in the NFL is there a block punt for a touchdown? That's the only difference. I mean, I'm fine with it. Everything's going to be just fine. The Steelers' defense is a tough matchup, but... I told you so. I listen. The excitement in the the team when the, the um, Isaiah um, McKenzie. Washington, McKenzie when Isaiah McKenzie runs it back goes back to twenty five yard line. I'm thinking to myself, you got to get seven here. Mm. You got to get six here. Got to get seven here. Whatever you got to do. Uh, from that moment on, they go backwards. They result in the field goal. And I said, for the Steelers, you know full well, Mike Tomlin is a team that's a grinding team. Let's work this out. Let's work this out. Let's keep this close. Let's keep this close. They did exactly that. No points in the third quarter. 81 yards, eight penalties for the Buffalo Bills. That's all self-inflicted. No, absolutely. But what's promising about that is, despite the fact that you played one of your worst offensive games ever, despite the fact that Levi Wallace playing as a second corner was getting essentially abused all day by Ben Roethlisberger, taking penalties in heaven, you only lost by six. And that six points was a block punt in the end zone. You didn't lose offensively. In fact, you could argue you played a better defensive game against the Steelers Sunday than you did last season. Look, it ain't always going to work. I am a tad concerned about some of the play calling in the second half. I know it's hard to get something going when you're taking all the penalties that they were taking, sustained drives, but... You have a quarterback that's six foot five and 250 pounds who was born to jump over an offensive line for a yard, and you throw the ball backwards four yards to Matt that Breda. You you took the ball out of your greatest playmaker's hand to hand it to your third running back slash special teams ace to get a first down and a drive that mattered on a fourth and one. I'm done rambling. I'm sorry. Okay, so look ahead. Uh, we'll go here. Three and a half is the line. At Miami, the Bills are favored. How do you see it? I want them to spit up his water. Ten. I Buffalo really by don't ten. Want to see that. Yes, I do. I do want to see that. I want it to happen right here on the show. The Buffalo Bills will win by ten. You want to know why? Because they're just going to throw the ball all over the field. They have no running game. That's just the way they play. It will be a dogfight every single week for the Buffalo Bills. So, why not by ten? They do have a running game. Devin Singletary, <laughs> six and a half yards of carry. <laughs> 75 yards on 11. Then why did you give it to him more? Uh, I don't know. That's a great question. Which questions again? Look, there was a drive towards the end of the game where they're headed towards the end zone. They end up settling for a field goal. He was getting chunks of yardage. They went away from the run again. Yeah, why? I don't know. It's the running. It's the coaching. It's not the actual running game. They spent no time game. talking about the running game and their lack of it. Because I it doesn't. Any it, other aspect. It would have team. helped against a team like that. Maybe oh. your defense would have rested and not scored and let, let, get scored on so much. No, in the but both half. defenses were going back and forth. And again, even in the second half, what did you. You gave up. 16 points, which is not unreasonable for an NFL team and a half in the NFL. I don't think that says the defense collapsed. Again, it's the punt. To answer your question, I apologize. <laughs> sure! The Bills win. They cover. They ain't doing 10. I will say this. I'm not worried right now. The Bills are still Super Bowl contenders. If you go down to Miami, it is a divisional game. You are playing a rival. It is hot. If something happens in this game where you do not win and you, not convincingly, but it's a game that looks like they're winning front to finish, I'm scared. I'm very scared. Do it this week. Make me feel better. Everybody has a bad day. We're all going to be okay. But if they don't do what they have to do on Sunday, I'm going to dig a hole and hide under my house. So you had Pittsburgh covering last week? No, I had Pitt. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so you got the one right. We were on the wrong side. Hmm. We're all on, the, on board this week. I got them by six. This is the Rochester Press Box, a segment brought to you by Ralph Honda. Like it or not, is next. He's worried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. All of these things show Josh Allen has a strive for greatness inside of him. Falcon Around with Carl Falk. New episodes every Tuesday on Rock Sports Now. Here's the Press Box Trivia Answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Are you facing criminal charges from a DWI and feel that you never imagined it could happen to you? Contact attorneys with years of experience as prosecutors and defenders. Contact Kanguli Brothers Law today for a free consultation. You can put your trust in us. Thanks for joining us and welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. This portion of the Press Box Like It Not brought to you by Ganguly Brothers Law. Attorneys with years of experience defending the accused don't go unprepared. Contact Ganguly Brothers Law today. Uh, like it or not, like I know the answer to this one, Pat. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick gets hurt, is going to be out six to eight weeks minimum, and the, the thought is that maybe his career ends. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't like that Ryan Fitzpatrick is hurt because I love Ryan Fitzpatrick. Why do you mean to phrase it that way? Like a family man, but I will say it like this. I have been waiting for eight years for Ryan Fitzpatrick to stop playing football so I could fully love him again. And I couldn't fully love him as the quarterback of the Jets. I couldn't fully love him as the quarterback of the Texans when he comes back and beats Buffalo, Miami. I could go on and on and on, Tampa Bay. When he's done, I can fully love him. So if this is the end, and it's a terrible way for things to end, and I want the guy to be able to keep making money, he looks like he just loves playing football. There is a part of me inside that is happy that it's over so he can come back, be fully embraced. He loves Buffalo. He talks about it all the time, the fans in Buffalo. And I want to be able to wear his jersey into the stadium with pride and say he's ours again because he's going to forever. He played for 45 teams. He's going to be a Buffalo Bill forever. I think he's an amazing talent in an interview. I think he's an amazing talent at a press conference. I think he's amazing. I think he's going to be a great broadcaster. I think it's, I think to your point, I think the Bills should start thinking about using him or somebody's going to pick him up as a broadcaster somewhere along the line uh, if he doesn't want to go into finance or whatever it is that he went to, was it, Stanford? Harvard, Stanford, 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 Harvard, Stanford. whatever. Stanford. whatever. I think what I've you need excluded. is a Hall of Fitzpatrick with a jersey from every team he's played. No, you know, I only wear Bills jerseys, but I have like five Bills jerseys, so that's a whole other thing. All right. Like it or not, uh, the, the announcers, I forget what was it, I forget what the date was, but they misidentify uh, Kelly Stafford. Yeah, I, I don't blame this on the announcers. I blame this on the technology and the broadcast and anybody else who doesn't use facial recognition software like everybody does on social media. How do you not know who the starting quarterback's wife is or looks like and make sure you put her on camera? You should have recognition software. We have it everywhere. We use it for security. We use it for social media. This is really a problem. No one should not be identified wrong especially if they are a player, if they're a player sibling or family, because they are everywhere. They go to all sorts of uh, charity events. They're all over the place. Like they're, they're in these photos. It's, it's just, it, it baffles the mind. Nobody knows what this woman looks like. It, 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 what get, you've got something I know. It just that they even wander into the stands. I think it's a risky practice anyway. I think you get what you ask for. As a spouse of a fan. As a broadcast, as a telecaster, to your point, I think it's a risk to do it at all. Along those lines, did anyone else panic when they saw that, thinking that they misidentified? Now, I'm not playing anything because I'm sure Matthew Stafford's mm-hmm. a good guy. <laughs> like, what if that's not his wife, but somebody that's not his wife, but somebody he knows, but somebody that's not his wife? You get, like, that's what I thought it initially yeah. happened. Like, they that's saw him funny. with another woman, and look at it. Oh, it's actually not his wife, and yeah. now a whole bunch of stuff's gone wrong in this guy's life. Like, it was, I don't wonder what the legal liability is of there. Like, have you ever been like at a sporting event and in the back of your mind, I haven't, mm-hmm. that thinking, God, I hope they don't put the camera on me. I have no shame, so no, but you're, you're a good <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm married, so yeah, and if you don't you get my wife wrong, you got to deal with her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Point made. Like it or not, brought to you by Ganguly Brothers Law Unfinished Business is next. The Press Box Dead of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. 
McArdle's is open seven days a week with dining available indoors and out, takeout and delivery. Come home to McArdle's. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here in the Rochester Press Box. Time for Unfinished Business. Unfinished Business brought to you by Greg the Roofer. Better roof, better price, better call Greg the Roofer. Save time and money on your roof, siding, and windows for a free estimate. Financing is available, and it's gregtheroofer.com. Unfinished Business. Pat, start us off. You know, there was lots of times where people started panicking during that Bills game on Sunday against the Steelers, right? It wasn't when they went three and out on that opening kickoff, although it wasn't great. It wasn't when the offensive line started losing to every defensive player that Pittsburgh had. And it wasn't when Beth, Ben Roethlisberger managed to string together a couple of completions to drive them down the field. Those were all sustainable. The thing that nobody's talking about that really started to scare me were a couple of routine drops from Bills wide receivers, and it wasn't anything that stood out. Cole Beasley, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, they were all victims of it. But that didn't happen last year. It never happened last year. In fact, I implore you to close your eyes and imagine one time that you saw Cole Beasley or Stephon Diggs drop a football last season. Didn't happen. Cole Beasley had arguably three drops in the first half. First one, I turned sideways and went, hmm, that's interesting. Second one was a little bit alarming. Third one, what is going on? Last year's Bills game, last year's Bills games went well because everything went well for the Bills. After 25, 30 years of having no luck at all as a Bills fan, we got all of it. And I think Sunday was a reminder that you're not going to be able to live every game on luck. That the Bills should have won that game. It was a simple difference of a block punt. But you're going to drop some balls. You're going to cough a few up when T.J. Watt tackles you from behind. And if the Bills are going to do what they are designed and destined to do this year, stuff's going to get cleaned up before next week. So Aaron Rodgers played his first NFL game week one, and what happened? Well, the Saints went out and whooped them 38-3, which makes Monday night's game against the Lions so important for week two for a rebound. Now, after that first game, Aaron Rodgers basically said we have to find a way to overcome adversity. Well, Aaron Rodgers was also the individual during the offseason, wasn't sure he even wanted to play for the Green Bay Packers. That spilled into the preseason. Then after that... Well, it never really got fixed. And so all of that adversity has now gone into the start of the NFL season for Aaron Rodgers. Listen, the guy is a three-time MVP. He is going to be a Hall of Famer in the NFL. If he doesn't want to play, that's fine. But a quarterback indecisive, that is going to lead to low energy. And that's going to lead to a season that's ending before it even starts. It was like seeing an old friend, a guy you once knew, a good guy, got into a little bit of trouble and kind of fell off the map. And then there he was again. Zay Jones was in that first Brandon Bean draft for the Buffalo Bills back in 2017, picked in the second round out of East Carolina. Jones was and actually still is the all-time college football pass catching leader with 388 career receptions. In his senior year, he broke the single season NCAA pass catching mark with 158, and he got 22 of those in one game. So Zay Jones came to the Bills with a little street cred. In his two seasons in Buffalo, Jones played in 31 of the team's 32 games and started 25 of them, productive to a point, but he kind of sort of failed to live up to expectations. And then there was that incident, suspicion of vandalism in an L.A. apartment complex that had Jones allegedly attempting to jump from a 30th floor window. That's not a great look. The Bills traded him to the Raiders midway through the next season in 2019 for a fifth round draft pick, a net loss of three positions in the draft for what became Tommy Doyle. Buffalo's current backup right tackle. Jones faded into the background. And then there he was again, wearing a new number seven, running loose in the Baltimore backfield on Monday Night Football, catching an overtime game-winning touchdown pass from Derek Carr. In his post-game comments, Carr, the star of the game, with 435 yards passing, couldn't say enough good things about his unheralded teammate, Zay Jones. He hasn't exactly come full circle, but wasn't it good to see him again? Unfinished Business brought to you by GregTheRoofer.com. Quick trivia. 2017 Bills draft class. Zay Jones is another member of the Oakland, uh, the Oakland, the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm -hmm. From that draft, from the Bills. Anyone know? That would be uh, former Bills opening day starting quarterback and future Hall of Famer Nathan Peter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who was in need of some redemption himself. Guys, nice show. What Drake, Hall of Fame is it. he getting into? The well, Hall I, of Fame of great. Redemption. Well, the Hall of Fame of great quarterback names. That's a great quarterback, Nathan Peterman. 
No? All right. It is not. All right. On that, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week with the Rochester Press Box.